What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Balanced Perception YouTube channel. And today I'm here with 10 tips that will hopefully help you if you want to get into 3D printing your cosplays. Again, I am still rather new to this hobby, but let me tell you over the course of like three or four months, I have learned a crap ton of information. And I'm giving all of that information to you guys for free because hopefully it will help you avoid some of the problems I have avoided. As you can see, I have tons of items that I've printed very large items like this one, Jigs' Fishbone uh, from League of Legends, but I'm gonna go over how you can hopefully print some of these large items too, and a few things that will definitely help you avoid some of the mistakes I made, so let's get into it. <laughs> All right guys, so as I said, I'm going to give you 10 tips today to hopefully help you get started with your 3D printing cosplay, you know, adventures. I'm just gonna go ahead and start it off. Our very first tip is to choose a large bed or large size 3D printer. What I mean by that is, look at this right here. We have our CR10 in the background. This is just a CR10. I think it's a V2. Um, don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it is. It is currently printing Jinx's fish bones, you know, the head, it comes in three pieces. This is the first piece, is the head of it. As you can see, it has a very large build volume. You're definitely gonna want a very large build volume if you plan to print armor, if you're making swords, um, basically anything that is, you know, an extremely large format, especially for helmets, uh, chest pieces, all of that. You can, of course, use a smaller printer, don't get me wrong. Like you will see right over here, this is my Ender 3 V2. This was the very first printer I got. I love it, as you can see, it's still printing right now, but I have to slice things up to get it to fit on there. I was always just like, hey, I can just slice whatever I want to fit you know, the printer I have. This is true, you can do that, but after slicing things like into nine, 10 pieces, it kind of got annoying when I could just buy one of these and slice it into like two or three pieces. So that's gonna be my very first tip for you guys. Get a large bed printer such as a CR10, you know, Ender 3 will work, but just know you're gonna have to do a lot more work with that. Tip number two is going to be to choose a very well-known filament type. Whether you go PETG, whether you go um, PLA, no matter what you do, choose a filament that is by a brand that is very well known. E-Sun is very popular for PLA. That's what these are printing on right now. I haven't tried PETG or any of the other filament types. I mean, there's tons out there. PLA is my go-to right now. Like I said, a skin, I, again, I am still kind of new. So I've had more than enough trouble with PLA. So I'm just sticking to that right now. And you know, figuring out which temperature to use, what temperature for your bed, um, your E steps, all of that. It's, it's just better to stick to one filament type. So I personally use Amazon Basics along with Esun, and my third one is the Creelty brand. I haven't had any problems with any of these. I really thought a lot of my problems were related to filament. They weren't, um, they were related to another issue which I'm gonna discuss, and that brings me to our number three topic. So our third tint or tip is going to be learn to level your bed. I'm gonna say it again for the people in the back, learn to level your bed. Jesus Christ, this has been the most frustrating, infuriating, and most ridiculous problem that I have had that has caused so many other problems. Leveling your bed makes, I mean, it's night and day for your printers. You have to get it daggone near spot on to get your print to come out the way you want. None of the corners can be off. If you have to learn the signs of under extruding versus over extruding, there's tons of images. I may put one up here, a perfect image of what under extrusion looks like versus over extrusion versus, you know, just regular perfect extrusion. Learn to recognize these because I will tell you, if for example, you're under extruding, the tip of the nozzle can hit part of your print because you know your bed is unlevel at some part. So over here, it's you know over extruding, over here is under extruding and it bumps part of your print. You're you know two days into your print and boom, you've completely ruined it. So I'm telling you from experience, it's happened, it sucks. Learn to level the bed. This print right here is a five day print. I would be extremely pissed if on day four something happened 
Uh, yeah, so please, I cannot emphasize this enough. Learn to level your bed and also get a file. There's tons, I can link one in this video for like CR10s, Enders, a test file, not specifically a test file, a level file that will learn to level your bed. You can see exactly which parts are over and under extruding and you will keep using this file over and over so you become very familiar with what normal is supposed to look like. Tip number four is going to be have extra parts. Um, you are going to mess things up and you're gonna mess them up a lot. At least I know I have. I messed up the nozzle, I messed up the Bowden tube. Um, that's this little white piece, hopefully you guys can see right here. I messed up my extruder, I messed up my gears. All from just, one, not learning to properly level my bed. Two, not knowing what you know temperature to run things at. Long story short, you're gonna need extra parts and it's much better to have them on hand than it is to have to order them and wait like, you know, a day or two, especially if you have a print that's already going, something messes up and you have to, you know, swap things out real quick. You waste all that time. Long story short, have extra parts. Um, that's something I really wish I would have known, especially when like stepper motors or, you know, just tubing, um, what's it? oh my gosh, filament heads, they're, cheap i mean you can get like 20 for 10 bucks it's extremely cheap so just go ahead and invest it in now especially if you're new because you're going to mess things up tip number five is going to be to learn your slicing software i personally have only used cura and pressure slicer they both have their pros and cons um but overall i have been leaning more towards cura this print that's going right here is a kindred mask i use um Cura settings to print that one, whereas this one was sliced in Precious Slicer. I just have different reasons for it. You will just really learn what you like more. Um, for bigger prints sometimes, I like to use Precious Slicer. For, I mean, they basically do the same thing, but I just work with them different and I have grown to, you know, just like both of them and learn them both equally. But I use, you know, Precious Slicer to do certain things and Cura to do other things. Also, learn, learn, learn to use a brim, to use a raft, they will save you a lot of time. I did not know what a brim was, I did not know what a raft was. I had no idea what any of things were. I just loaded up my file, I was like print, test print, and then print. And I could have saved myself a lot of headache if I had learned these things. So that's going to be all wrapped into tip number five. Tip number six is going to be to learn to use support. What are supports? learn what supports are. They are used, let's say for example, if I wanted to print this fish bone head that is currently printing right there, you cannot print on areas that do not have anything underneath them. So for example, if you guys can see here, the fin right here is a bit higher than this base, you know, the base of the actual, I don't know, part of the three parts of this. The base is lower than the fish head is. I could not print this part right here without supports because you cannot print in midair. That's something I did not really understand or learn until after I had messed up a few prints and I was like, hey, you know, just throw it in the printer, print, go. No, you have to enable supports and you have to put them in areas that are just basically free hanging. So, you know, you cannot, you just think of it like a building. If you want to build a T, you can build the base part of the T straight up, no problem, because it connects to the ground but the other parts here are gonna need something supporting it. And if I go out too far, I'm sure you can go out like a little bit and then, you know, it'll be no problem. But if you go out too far, it's gonna need some type of support connecting to the ground to hold it up. So definitely learn supports. They will come in handy. Things from tree supports, how much infill to use, how thick to make your supports, that's all gonna come in handy. So definitely learn supports. Tip number seven is going to be to watch your first layer. I have noticed that with 3D printing, your first layer is crucial. Everything is gonna go based off of your first layer. If your first layer goes down very smoothly, very nicely, you're probably gonna be good to go. But I still say watch it just to make sure because I know I've just hit print, walked away, came back, and I had this string jumbled mess and I was like, what the hell happened? Well, A, I didn't know what happened because I wasn't there watching it. And two, it just, 
had it even you know continued on i'm sure i would have had problems because i couldn't see if the first layer was under extruding versus over extruding of course you know this with you know your level test but it just helps to really really watch the first few layers go down so i definitely advise to watch the first layer you know even the first few layers when you're doing especially something large like this you know you might be able to get away with it with like a 30 minute print because you know 30 minutes is nothing five days you're going to want to watch that so definitely watch your first layer Tip number eight is going to be don't jump immediately to upgrades. I know everyone wants to upgrade. Upgrade just make our life easier. They definitely help solve a lot of issues, but they also bring a lot of issues. These two printers behind me, I have another CR10 over here offside from the camera that you can't see, but these two printers only have two upgrades at the moment, and that's the extruder gears. You can see this little red part right here, along with there's one up here that's because i was getting slippage occurring you guys will probably encounter this where your filament makes this clicking sound from a under extrusion or b the gears are not able to grab your filament i was having it happen tons of times come to find out it was actually because i didn't have my bed properly level so again level your bed but then a bit of it also had to do with you know the ambient temperature of the room things like that the filament i was using i upgraded to dual gears there's a whole video on that that i can definitely link for you guys it's great but that's the only upgrade i've made to these so far and i've printed tons of things everything from jinx's pistol to um items from genshin impact to mask from arcane league of legends series that's the only upgrade I made and all my prints, you know, that did come out well, have come out well. So I would say don't upgrade until you know exactly what you're doing, exactly what you're looking for. Also make sure the upgrade goes in line with the filament type that you're gonna be using because certain upgrades work better with certain types of filament. Tip number nine is probably gonna be the most difficult one and that's going to be to be patient. Jesus Christ, do you have to be patient with 3D printing? There's so much to learn. There's so many problems that are gonna occur. You're gonna to have to figure so many things out. You're gonna be on Reddit, you're gonna be on Facebook forums. You're gonna be all across Google trying to figure out your unique problem. You're gonna think, what the hell, screw this hobby. I could just have somebody else print this for me, you know, for my cosplay, it's no you know, problem. Of course you can do that. But if you're really, you know, invested in this and really wanna learn it, you're gonna to have to have a ton of patience. Especially, you know, with printing large things, you're gonna get failures, um, you know, failing of the parts, and then you're just gonna be like, what the hell do I do? I don't know, because you can't, if you know, if you get a CR, like a, a Creality product, there's not really like, you can just get on the phone and call Creality and be like, hey, I have this problem, and they tell you exactly what's wrong. You're gonna have to kind of figure things out and look at forums, ask people for help. There's probably gonna be some dude in like 2017 who had the same problem as you on the same printer and like you just read the whole thread and the answer to your problems is probably in there. So definitely learn to be patient because God, you're gonna need it. And tip number 10, our very last tip is gonna basically be in line with our tip number nine, specifically that is utilizing all of your resources like YouTube, Facebook, Reddit, other friends who 3D print, I mean everything because you're gonna feel that your problem may be unique to you. I guarantee you it's not. Other people have had this problem. They've been just as frustrated. Just simply be patient. Sometimes you have to step away. I have literally worked on a problem for five or six hours, stepped away from it, came back the next day, and like that, I was like, oh, that's what's wrong. I mean, I'll even give you guys an example. Just the other day, I was getting these large blobs forming on my um, Kindred mask. They, you know, every few layer lines, like these just blobs of PLA was just, you know, sticking to the, uh, the actual print. And I couldn't for the life of me figure out why. I thought I had to do something with my E-step setting, something in Cura, I was jumping back and forth there. I thought it was something with the filament, so I changed the filament out. I thought it was something wrong with the ambient temperature of the room. Couldn't figure it out. Stepped away, came back, and I was like, you know what? I did just change the nozzle a few days ago. So I took this whole assembly apart. Come to find out, I didn't tighten the nozzle enough, so filament was leaking out the side of it, and that's why my nozzle just kept getting all these blobs all over it, because filament was coming out from everywhere. So, again, just take your time, use patience, utilize resources. It was actually um, a Facebook group I'm in, a CR10 group that someone suggested that, and I was like, didn't even think about that. So that's what got me to that solution. And I decided, you know what? 
I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys one more tip if you made it to this part of the video. That is gonna be tip number 11. When it comes to combining parts, let's say for example, good old fishbone here, I can link that video for you guys too. There's a whole video. To get these to line up very nicely, use rubber bands and super glue. I have found that super glue is by far the best glue that I've you know, gotten to get all of these things to stick together. There's also PLA like welding, I have used that, but I'm not getting into that right now. For now, use super glue and rubber bands. I'll just literally put two parts together rubber band the front to the back and put glue in the middle line them up rubber bands act as a very very nice vice or you know clamps um they're reusable it's perfect and super glue is absolutely amazing it dries quickly it holds things together very nicely as you can see this piece right here i have not done any welding on it it is just simply super glued together and as you can tell it's not coming apart at all i used a lot of super glue but nonetheless just for super glue alone, this is very sturdable. So that is tip number 11. I just wanna say thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I hope these tips help some of you guys. I really wish I had you know, found a video like this or you know, have maybe just done more research. I'm sure there's other videos out there like this, but they, there's so much to learn about these daggone printers that you can't possibly cover it all in just a tips video or just by reading. You have to get your hands dirty. You have to experience the problems because that's how you're basically going to learn. And that's how you're going to get your awesome, cool cosplay prints, your awesome armor prints, your weapon prints, all of that. So just stick to the process. I guarantee you it's going to get better and you're going to learn it all. That's gonna be it for today, guys. Thank you so much. As you see, I keep looking back because every now and then like I hear a noise. I don't know if it's coming from outside, but I just get worried. Like, you know, I just constantly check my 3D printers. I come in here like, I, I get to fortunately work from home, but I come in here like every 15 to 20 minutes. I'm like, oh, what's going on? Make sure nothing's happened, especially with the large prints. Cause hopefully if something did happen, I can fix it. But anyways, thank you guys so much for checking out my video. Don't forget about our giveaway that's going on. I'm currently giving away two Jinx pistols, which are in the other room. I wish I could show them right now, but I don't have them on me right now. Uh, hopefully you guys can win those. Definitely check out that video and look forward to the next. Until next time, guys, stay boundless. See you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>